so much choir for your inspiration on this Women's Day as we honor our women. Amen. Amen. Yes. In obedience to the Lord, I invite you to turn with me for today's uh, sermonic word to the Old Testament book of Judges. Amen. Praise the Lord. Judges, the fourth chapter. Judges 4. And then we will also read the theme scripture for our Women's Day celebration, which is Matthew 18 and 20. Amen? Amen. We will begin in the Old Testament book of Judges. Amen. We're going to commence reading at verse 4. And this is the New International Version of God's Word. If you have it, say amen. 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 Now, Deborah, verse 4, a prophet, the wife of Lapidus, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, not that Barak, yes. son of Abinom from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you, Go and take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. As not the Lord commanded you, I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops, to the Kishon River, and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. Amen. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulon and Naphtali and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. Let's get into verse 12. When they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abinam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned from Hiroshia, Hagium, to the, to the Kishon River, all his men and his 900 chariots fitted with iron. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, get up. This is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the score. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Matthew 18 and 20, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Amen. 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 Thank God for the reading of his word. All right, hold up those Bibles. This is how we do it. This is God's word. It's God's, God's word. word. I receive it. I receive it. I believe it. I believe it. I decree it. I decree it. God's word. God's word. Is a lamp unto my feet. A lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. And a light unto my path. This is a church. This, this is, is a church. church. Where everybody is somebody. Where everybody is somebody. And Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is Lord. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. One sign. One sign. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
and just for a few minutes, I want to raise this question to you as we celebrate our win. Amen? I want to ask you this question in an attempt to answer it in a shamanic fashion as we shine and spotlight on this text, Judges 4, 4 through 16, and also consider Matthew 18 and 20. The question that I want to ask is this, do we have a tough faith? Do we have a tough faith? Do you have a tough faith? Amen. Hello. Amen. You sit next to somebody, shake their hand, and ask them. Do you have a tough faith? Exactly. Do you have a tough faith? Amen. That's, it's, it's, a relevant, it's a relevant question, especially in the time in which we live. Amen? Amen. Amen? And in keeping with our women's weekend theme, Christian women in the presence of God, honoring, as we pause to honor our women and empower our women as well. Amen? Amen. In a day when as we look across the political terrain of our country and we observe the efforts that are underway to turn the clock back. And as we praise God and thank God for the women of our congregation. Amen? Amen. Praise God for the women in our family. We praise God for the women in our homes. We praise God for the women in our church. And we praise God for the women in our community. Amen? Amen. That was one of the themes that really was brought out on yesterday Amen. at the women's conference. The, the need for our women to uh, be present and to be the nurturing presence in our home and community. Amen? Amen. And that our women should model Christian behavior. So we thank God for the women in our culture, our faith, and our home. We thank God for tough-minded women tough-minded women. I thank God for the women that were, that surrounded me as a young lad growing up in church. The women that would tell me to, boy, sit down somewhere. <laughs> women that would tell me, stop running in church. Tell me to tie my shoes up. Open up your Bible. Yes. Women that surrounded us uh, and, 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 and literally raised us in church. They were tough women. They had a tough faith. And you know what tough faith is? Tough faith to me, to me, just simply means that you know who and yep. whose you are. And that you refuse to let anything or anyone hold you back. Amen. That's tough faith, y'all. That's tough faith. That is tough faith. It just means, I'll say it again, it means that you know who and whose you are in Christ. It just means that you know that you got Christ in you and you are in Christ. And that because of that, you refuse to let anyone or anything stop.
stop you from achieving your greatness. Amen? Amen. In other words, you can't keep a good woman down. Amen. You can't keep a good man down. You can't keep a good believer down because we got some tough faith. Yes. Pastor Robert Chu, the late pastor of the Christian Cathedral in California, put it like this. He says, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Sometimes don't last, but tough people do. So if times are tough, if times are tough, understand that you got some spiritual toughness in you. That if you, if you take advantage of your spiritual toughness, it, and, and the question is, how do you get that toughness? How do you get that, that, that spiritual toughness? What well, I'm glad you asked. The simple answer is, you get that, you get tough in Christ by staying in God's presence. All right, all yeah, right. That's, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. You develop your spiritual toughness by staying in God's presence. Where two or three are gathered in my name, says the Lord. There I will be in the midst of them. You don't get, guess what? You don't have to come to church to get tough, right? You know that, right? You know that you can get spiritually tough right on your bedroom floor, on your living room floor. All you got to do is get on your knees, pray to God. Get on your knees, pray to God. Make sure you are studying the word. Meditate on his word and understand that God is in you. That's how you get spiritually tough. And as I said before, and I said this before, and when, then, then when you come to church, it's gravy time. Yes. yes. You come to church to worship and praise God, but you all through the week, Monday through Friday, as Satan has had his ifs on your trail, and, and, and you've been on your knees in prayer, you've been studying God's word, and then when you get up on Sunday morning, it's time to go worship the Lord. Tell you, my friends, I tell you, we need some spiritually tough people. We, we need some, 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 some people who know that, that to, the way to keep their faith tough, spiritually tough, is to stay in God's presence. I like how the writer of Deuteronomy 33 and 27 says it. He says, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Just means that wherever we are, God is with us, and that God shields us under His arms. Do you have a tough faith? Do you have a tough faith? Well, I'm glad that I'm asking that question because Sister Deborah is going to answer that question for us. She's going to show us what a tough faith looks like. Amen. Amen. Because Deborah had a situation. She had a situation, y'all. She had a she had a situation. Everybody, you know what a situation is, don't you? Yeah. Everybody's got a, a little situation every now and then. Everybody is your back is against the wall. Everybody's got a, 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 a situation where 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 it, it, it seems like you won't make it out alive. T. S. Eliot says that life is risky business, and if you're not careful, you won't make it out alive. Well, look at what Sister Deborah is facing. Look at her situation. She is a prophetess and a judge. In fact, she is the only judge, the only female judge in pre-monarchic Israel. She was from an agricultural society where, get this, where women were second-class citizens. Right. So, Sister Deborah was regarded as a second-class citizen. She was fighting against patriarchy and male dominance. Yes. I tell you, Sister, Sister Deborah was a tough sister yes. in a tough situation, but she had a tough faith. Mm -hmm. right. She was a tough sister in a tough situation, but she had a tough faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. She, she, was, she had a tough faith. Her situation was complicated by, by, by the Israelites that she was put over to judge. The Israelites had fallen back into the cycle of doing what was evil in God's sight. So as a result, 
God had delivered the Israelites into the oppressive hands of King Jabin of Canaan. And Sisera was his commander in chief. Amen? Amen. Sisera was an oppressor. He was technologically advanced. His army had 900 chariots fitted with iron. Yes. Sisera was superior to the Israelite army. Sisera was superior. He was well advanced. And, 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 and Deborah's complication, her situation was complicated by the fact that the Israelites needed to be liberated from oppression. Does it sound like me? Does it sound like that like, that, like we, that we we have walked that trail or that we are presently walking that trail? She knew that her that the situation would require a military solution. And why, 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 why was that? Why was that? Why would it require a military solution? Well, from the reading of the text, the board, as I said earlier, was a tough sister in a tough situation, and she but she had a tough Faith, but guess what? There were no men to stand up around her. That's right. Isn't that, doesn't that sound familiar? Does it, does, it, does it sound familiar? There were no men. The men were sitting down, but the board stood up and she gave leadership. She gave leadership when it was needed. She gave leadership when the Lord called her. The Lord called her and raised her up, and the board responded to the call. She responded with a tough faith. A tough faith. So what does a tough faith require? The resolution of this complicated situation tells us what tough faith requires. What did Deborah need in order to, to respond to this challenge? She needed a tough faith. What do we need to respond to our personal challenges in life, we need a tough faith. Yeah. What do we need when we are looked over, when we've been looking to get a promotion, or we are bypassed, we need a tough faith. What do we need when the relationship that was once so promising, the one, you know, the move that we took to meet the family turned out to be anything but that, we need a tough faith. Faith. What do we need when the bills are due but right. we don't have the money? Right. What do we need when your change is strange uh -huh. and your money is funny? Yes. We need a tough faith, y'all. What do we need when our kids are gone astray? Yeah. When, 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 when you have to look at them and say, I didn't raise you like that. What do we need when they need to kick out of school? When the grades are plummeted, I tell you, we need a tough faith. 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 What do we need? Zion, when, when we are smack in the middle of a zip code in which there we are surrounded by a, 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 a community that needs our ideas, a, need, a, a community that needs our efforts, we need a tough faith. Amen? Where do we get this tough faith? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. First of all, this tough faith, there are some things that tough faith requires. If we're going to resolve our complicated situations, if we're going to make use of our tough faith, we got to understand that tough faith requires, first of all, confidence in God. Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. She said, the Bible says that she sent and summoned. She had confidence. She had, she had confidence in God because she sat, she sent and she summoned. She had a plan. She was resolute. She was, she was, she knew what she wanted and she knew how to get it. All she had to do was stand up and act. My brothers and sisters, most of us are here in this room today. All we need to do is just sin and summon our faith. All we need to do is sin and summon our courage. All of us in here, God has called you to do something. God has called you to some great task in your life. God is calling you to some responsibility, but you are afraid to move on your faith. You're afraid to summon your faith, your 
afraid to summon the courage, or maybe somebody has talked you out of it. Maybe somebody has, has suggested to you, no, no, you don't need to be doing that. You don't, you, don't, you don't have any business trying to start your own business. You don't have any business trying to go back to school and complete your degree. You don't have any business trying to make yourself better with financial management. No, no, you don't need to do that. Somebody in this room today has been taught out of a dream. Somebody has been taught out of a vision. Somebody had an aspiration. And, and, and you allow somebody else to talk you out of it. But Deborah was not that kind of a woman. She was a tough Amen. woman Amen. in a tough situation. But she had a tough faith. Amen. She had confidence in God. And therefore, do you know that when you have confidence in your in God, do you know that that automatically means that you have confidence in yourself? All right. Do you know that when, when, when you know when you are sure of your God power, yes. that, that you know, as the Bible says, I can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. When you are confident in God, there is no such word as can't. Yes. Can't is not part of your of the Christian's lexicon. Yes. The vocabulary of the Christian should never use the word can't. Because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors through yeah, yeah. him that loves us. She was confident in God, and therefore she was confident in herself. That's the first thing. If you, if you want some tough faith, Sister Boy is telling us, she's telling us, first of all, that you got to have confidence in God, and that automatically gives you confidence in yourself. Secondly, and I'm almost done. Secondly, if you want to, you gotta understand that tough faith requires that knowing the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. That's right, man. That's right, man. Knowing the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. He says to Barak, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. In other words, the Lord has authority. When you, when God is in your life, God has authority in your life. And God has authority over anybody who comes against you. But all you got to do is let the Lord fight your battles. All right, all right. Let the Lord fight your battles. Don't get mad. Right. Don't get angry. Right. Don't get your pistol. The Ciceras in on our jobs, those who, who 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 appear to have an edge, the competitive edge, those who have more money, those who have more technological genius, those who have more savvy, those who have more power. But I tell you, I feel like Joshua when he came back after spying the land. He came back, and in spite of the giants that he saw in the promised land.
case you didn't get that email, in case you didn't get that memo, life is a combination of ups and downs. And downs. Look at what, what the word says here. It says that the Bora arose in verse 9c. Verse 10c, the Bora went up. In speaking with Barak, she says, go up. They went up uh -huh. to Mount Tabor. They went up yeah. to the hill. Mm -hmm. and, and, and get this, get this. Watch, watch, watch this. Though. Watch this. She encourages Barak to go up into the hill country. But check this out. The Barak instructed Barak to move up which seemed to be, if you read the context of the story, the whole chapter, it seemed that Barak going up into the hill country would put him at a superior position because Sisera had 900 chariots uh -huh. fitted with iron. Uh -huh. But obviously, if your army is up in the hills as opposed to the plain, or in other words, the valley, if your army is situated up, it seemed like you would have the superior position. Yeah. But not necessarily. Because check this out. Check out what Barak did in verse 12. I'm sorry, verse 14. It says, Barak went where? Down from about 10. Check that. Get that. Don't miss that. Don't, don't miss that. The boy had told him to go up, up into the mountain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But Barak, after he was on the mountain, he goes down. down. Right. Right. Did you know, church? Right. Let's say this and I'm done. Right. Did you know that there is victory in the valley? Did you know that sometimes God doesn't mind you being down? That's right. Because God knows that the best way to get you up is to take you down. Right. Have you ever been there? All right. Have you ever been in the valley? Yes. Oh, I got, okay, y'all can act and say the only reason. Yeah, I can hold it today. But guess what? Sometimes God has to take you down. sitting on the mountaintop. All right. All right. You perched yourself <laughs> on the hill All right. waiting for your blessing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you've been waiting All right. and waiting
right now. But God said, no, it don't work like that. Sometimes you got to go down to the valley. You got to go to the valley in order to appreciate the mountaintop. Sometimes God will take you to the valley. You wanted that new spouse. God says, go back to the valley and come to terms with who you are. Get to know yourself in the valley before you go to the mountaintop of marriage of bliss. Get to know yourself. You wanted financial independence, but God says, no, no, go to the valley and learn how to better manage your money. Learn it by the space in the valley. And once you learn how to do that in the valley, God will take you up to the mountaintop. He'll take you up like you brought Jesus up out of the grave. With resurrection power. Resurrection power. The resurrection occurred in the valley, y'all. In the valley. God will take you to the valley before he puts you up on the mountaintop. But you gotta learn how to appreciate the valley. You gotta stay in the valley just a little bit longer. How long? Not long. How long, Lord, do I stay in the valley? And God says, not long, but until, until that happens. There is peace in the valley. There is peace in the valley. I can tell you what, you can find peace, purpose, power, and praise in the valley when you stay in his presence. Guess what? God is in the valley just as he is on the mountain. You can find God in the valley, whatever you're going through right now. Whatever valley experience you're going through right now, you can find God's presence right where you are. If you just look for him, look for his presence, look for his presence. It's not where you are, it's who's walking with you. That's what I like about God. In my downtown, when I'm in the valley, God is always walking with me. You can't depend on other people. Guess what? 